Welcome to yet another edition of Roland Rambles. Today I want to talk to you about Mozilla Thunderbird. Or just Thunderbird. You know, for some reason they can't decide if it's a Mozilla project or not. Mozilla may be the most annoying and confusing company ever, but let's set that aside. Let me give you a little history lesson. Back in the day, uh, a lot of people used Outlook Express and Outlook. And that was most of it. There were still people who used clients that are no longer really with us the way they were, like Eudora, uh, or I think Lotus uh, had a client, but a lot of the old mail clients are dead and gone, long gone, and we are left with Thunderbird and Outlook and um, the inability for me to get my glasses clean at any given time. I have yet to send email from these glasses. But anyway, Thunderbird was actually birthed out of Firefox. Firefox, originally Firebird, wait, no, originally Phoenix, was a rebuild of Mozilla, which was basically what the Netscape suite became when they open sourced it. So Firefox is a start over. Thunderbird was taking that start over called Firefox and making a mail client out of the same engine. Firefox and Thunderbird, back in their 1.0 days, were notable for being much better than existing clients and browsers. If you were, specifically with, with Firefox and Thunderbird, if you were browsing with them, you noticed that just you had more features, things ran better, things played nicer, you still had to deal with the scourge of everything is made for Internet Explorer, but for the most part, they did everything better than any of the competitors in the day. Um, save perhaps for certain very niche or advanced features that might have been in some of the big corporate clients. But Thunderbird in particular replaced Outlook Express for me back in the mid-2000s. Outlook Express was not a bad client, it just wasn't a great client. It was also a very vulnerable client. I will never forget the day that Outlook Express, I clicked on a message. I, I didn't open the message, I just clicked on it and just the process of that message being loaded into memory, it, it had a vulnerability exploitation in it that passed through Outlook and tried to infect my computer, Outlook Express. And Symantec Antivirus Corporate Edition, which I ran back then, caught it and went, hey, you almost got infected. And that put my paranoia up to 11,000. And I think that's the day that I went out and found Thunderbird and used it to replace Outlook Express. Because why would I want buggy, horrifically vulnerable Microsoft Outlook Express when I could use Mozilla Thunderbird, who uh, Mozilla already provided me with Firefox, which I loved because it was so much better than Internet Explorer ever could have been. Firefox was great. Thunderbird was by the Firefox people. Thunderbird was better than Outlook Express. Thunderbird wasn't as exploitable as Outlook Express. There really was no downside to switching to Thunderbird. And boy, oh boy, were there no downsides because it was wonderful. Nothing is perfect, but it was about as close to perfect as I could have gotten for a mail client in the mid-2000s for someone who was still budding. I still didn't know how to program in C. Most of, well, all of my programming experience up to the point that I first saw Thunderbird was actually just in 6502 Assembler and uh, Commodore Basic, things like that. Um, some scripting type stuff, batch files. Um, even I even made custom Windows information files to automate certain things. But ultimately, um, I wasn't really a big boy programmer yet. And I, I was closer to a normie than I am now. So Thunderbird was, you know, for a power user, it was a vast improvement over the offerings of the day. And as Thunderbird grew, it made some changes, and it made some improvements, and it regressed in a few ways. Um, and then, at some point, long after Thunderbird switched from proper versioning, you know, major minor revision, to annoying versioning, where they just up the version number for fun every month or, or so, um, at some point in the, somewhere between 60 and 78, I think, Thunderbird decided it was a good idea to ditch all of the icons for everything. 
and replaced them with scalable monochrome icons that only had the color assigned to the folder on them. So crappy black and white line drawings with colored paint slapped over them, which meant that now my inbox wouldn't look like a yellow envelope. Uh, now it would look like a crappy drawing of an envelope, a poorly done vectorized drawing of an envelope, and I could assign the color yellow to it, but it would apply to the whole thing, and it would still be a wireframe vector drawing and not a proper envelope with color fills, and it was just crappy. All of the icons looked like garbage. They were all just these hollow outlines, and they had no color, no gradients, nothing. So I locked my Thunderbird version, which, believe it or not, took a lot more effort than you would imagine, because this was past the point Mozilla decided that you shouldn't have the do not check and do not install updates option. Uh, you couldn't lock it without going into some advanced policy configuration crap. So Mozilla knows better than you what you want. But I've had my version locked, I think, at 78 for a long time, just because I'm not going to deal with the uh, vectorized garbage, but oh, it's scalable for high DPI screens because someone was stupid enough to buy a 13-inch laptop with a 4K screen. You know, something that you can't actually use the detail. Uh, it, it just makes everything look funny because you have to scale just to, to be able to read anything. Scaling on Windows has always been crap, by the way, just, just to be clear. But yeah, 4K 13-inch screens are stupid, and I think that they need to go away. But I don't have high DPI screens. I have normal screens that aren't stupid. So having a normal, not stupid screen, but oh, we want to support screens that require 400% scaling, let's throw away the raster icons completely and force everyone onto scalable, hastily done, outlined vector icons. And it, it just looked awful, and it actually actively impeded my workflow. So I rolled back, because it's harder to target something based on an icon when they change the icon. Not only that, but they change it so much it doesn't look like what it was before. It's, it's this vague ghost of what it was before. Several versions later, they thought it was a good idea to revamp the interface to make it more modern, bro. And you got the travesty um, that they called Supernova. I just found out they released one called Nebula, and uh, as far as I can tell, I can't see a difference, but whatever. Um, maybe I just didn't look hard enough. Maybe what I had in front of me wasn't actually Nebula, and they were just saying that it's a thing that exists that'll come soon. I didn't read the announcement very closely. But I do know that when Thunderbird switched the interface um, in the Supernova interface reboot, if you will, uh, they ruined everything about the Thunderbird user interface that made it useful. Gone is the get mail icon that lets you force it to get mail. Also, there's no longer the drop down that lets you tell it to selectively get mail only for, say, your newsreader feeds. Uh, now you just have a teeny tiny picture of a cloud with a down arrow, which is really, really, really stupid for a mail client that receives messages. Even the blogs and news feed stuff is still messages to have a cloud with a down arrow, not an envelope with a down arrow, or something. Like, why, why, what was wrong with the envelope with the little circly arrows or whatever? <clears throat> What's wrong with the traditional get mail icons? Nothing, nothing was wrong with them. They worked for a very long time. They made some degree of sense. A cloud with a down arrow makes no degree of sense. You're not pulling water vapor and putting it into your hard drive. That's not what's going on. So what is wrong with you? But besides that, they have this bar on the left that there's no real need for it. Um, that The dumb thing they did with the uh, where they had the tasks and calendar, if you had lightning, which was an extension, but then became integrated, you know, the dumb thing where they just sort of slapped them on in the top right, I understand that that wasn't the best, but cutting off a whole piece of the left side of the screen for like four or five buttons and then a bunch of empty space that has no value whatsoever. Guys, you could have done that a little better. Don't you think you could have done that just a little bit better? Just maybe, instead of putting a cloud and all these other stupid randomly placed, itty bitty in a lot of cases, space wasting in all cases, uh, except for the, of course, for the get mail button that's a cloud, which is the size of a tic-tac, 
Actually, I think it's the size of a dehydrated Tic Tac. That's a joke. Uh, maybe, just maybe, they invented something like 30 or 40 years ago, a user interface paradigm uh, or, or element that allows you to take a large set of common functions that you want to be available for quick access and put them in a single location so that they are all available in a consistent place with one click access to the user at all times. It's called a toolbar. Holy crap, a toolbar. What, what's a toolbar? A to, I, I, I don't know what a toolbar is. Um, I'm making a modern user interface. Screw toolbars. We don't do toolbars. Where we're going, we don't need bars. Instead, we have a bar that's on the left and takes up more space than a toolbar would have. We have a vertical toolbar that wastes a bunch of screen space, but we don't put all of the buttons in it. And then we changed the stuff that was already on the existing toolbar that everybody knew, and we made them difficult to see tiny buttons that are just sort of slapped above the folder list as if they're part of a folder list thing and not a really important button like, you know, compose message. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we want to compose message. Maybe we'd like a, a write button somewhere where we could find it, somewhere where it's easy to see and target. You make everything else on the screen huge. You make everything else on the screen have about a billion years worth of pixel padding because God forbid that user interfaces don't cater to touch screens, the worst user interface ever created, for any computer purposes anyway. You know, God forbid you actually pretend like most people still use touchpads and mice to, to, to use computers to get real work done. You know, God forbid that you make a desktop application that isn't basically an Android phone program blown up to fit on a 4K screen that's big as a wall. I mean, yeah, so stupid design decisions. So you nuke the toolbar, but then you put in another toolbar, but oh, but it's vertical with no text labels and wastes a bunch of space, and then the rest of the buttons you just sort of sprinkle where people can't find them. It's, it doesn't make any sense. You cannot make it make sense. Oh, but we're not done. Oh, well, Thunderbird had search functionality built in, but it, it didn't have like quick find bar in the beginning, and then they added some sort of quick find bar. And at some point they had two quick search bars, and then I guess they decided, well, you know, the, the search thing is kind of wonky the way that we've done it. We've made some bad decisions. So let's fix our bad decisions by following the stupid trend that Outlook decided to start and put a global search bar in the top of the program in the title bar, making the title bar fatter. Well, that was dumb. And that actually leads me to what inspired me to say something today. I hate all the user interface changes. The global search bar at the top is stupid. If I want to run a search, I can click a toolbar button. So you'll throw away the toolbar, but you'll replace it with a giant search bar I'll never use. And then you'll put another toolbar that's vertical. And then you'll throw the other tools all over the place. But you give me the search bar I don't care about. And today, I was at a customer's house for quite a while, an embarrassingly long time. I was actually helping them because I thought their problem could have been that I set their Gmail to instead of provide the last 1,000 messages over IMAP to provide all messages, and they went from 1,000 inbox messages to retrieving 164,000. So I was going through and helping them delete massive groups of garbage that they didn't need, mostly newsletters, sales flyers, spam, you know, just the same sender might send 2,000 messages over the past eight years that they've had the account. And I thought that maybe, just maybe, the problem was 160,000 messages coming in and it's causing Thunderbird to choke. But I didn't really think about the exact mechanics of why. Now remember, I'm on Thunderbird 78. That does not have this big global search bar at the top. And I don't ever use a global search. And I may have even disabled it already, so I've never run into a problem related to global search. But I read that sometimes the global search database, sometimes that can be an issue. So, what do I do? Uh, the global search database, I delete it because that's what a lot of people have done and gotten better results. But then I got to thinking, I started Thunderbird back up again, it's still kind of chuggy, and I got to thinking, well, what if I just turned it off? I know there's a checkbox in there for disabling global search, and I did. And all of a sudden, Thunderbird's retrieving messages like lightning. 
um, probably because it's not indexing them, which really indicates to me the Thunderbird's indexing is crap at scale, which pisses me off because it shouldn't be. But also, I ran some advanced searches. This, this lady's got a nice laptop, fast solid state drive, fast processor. It's like an i7 8th gen, you know, discrete graphics. This is a very nice, it's probably a thousand dollar two in one computer. This thing really flies, uh, except in Thunderbird where it was really almost unusable. So gl this global search thing getting turned off, all of a sudden it's retrieving messages quickly. And when I run a search, what do I find? I find that I can find a whole bunch of messages across time from a single sender in less than a second. It's so fast that it makes me wonder what the point of the global search even is. Why do I need the global search indexer if I can just run, a, run an advanced search for a sender and the results come in so quickly? Why is it even doing that? And it occurs to me, maybe it just shouldn't. You know, maybe if you're running a body search, it's a problem, but I've run body searches on my computer over my, um, I actually have Thunderbird mail spanning like 15 years, and I've run searches across my entire mail archive for text strings in the body of the email, which pretty much searches the entire message, um, all of it, including the headers, and I've gotten messages that, uh, you know, whatever, run, run these searches and gotten search results back in less than a minute, searching through literally hundreds of thousands of emails across a whole pile of hierarchical folders. So it's going to be very difficult for me to accept that this global search indexer does anything of value. But that's what I'm running into. All programs nowadays have gotten so much worse. And it's because of stuff like this. Clearly, no one tested this. Do these people who work on Thunderbird use Thunderbird? If so, do they actually use the functionality or are they turning it off and then shoving it on these poor normies who have no idea that it's even there that don't sit there swimming in the poop like I do? That's kind of how it feels. It feels like they're just, they're forcing it down everyone's throat. And I think it's reprehensible. Like you need a dog food. You need to eat your own dog food. The dog fooding is where you make a product and you use the product that you make and offer up to others, eating your own dog food. And I don't think Thunderbird people are dog fooding. If they were, don't you think they'd be doing a better job? Don't you think if Thunderbird people were actually dog fooding Thunderbird that you wouldn't have this problem where Thunderbird has a search indexer that can't handle a, even just, you know, 10,000 messages without completely choking and causing Thunderbird to hang and not respond, not respond when, when it's retrieving email. That's the reprehensible thing about it is that this thing, all it's doing is getting mail from the server and it chokes so hard on the indexing that it won't respond to Windows. You guys, I don't know what you're doing, but you need to stop and you need to go back. You, ha you have royally screwed up. And what you're doing is completely wrong. The interface is screwed. This search thing is screwed. And I feel like if I went back and installed Thunderbird 2 or 3, that I wouldn't have these problems. But you shove this stuff on people. And how is it that Thunderbird, you know, on my computers 10 or 15 years ago ran great? And back when we had hard drives, not SSDs, <clears throat> a lot of people didn't have multi-core processors. Um, you know, they were, they were a thing, but they weren't universal yet. And yet I, I feel like old Thunderbird ran better than this thing on this lady's computer. And it's just, it's scummy. And I'm upset where Thunderbird is gone because I care so much. Because I love Thunderbird and Firefox. And that's why I'm so upset to see these projects decay so poorly. <clears throat> like Thunderbird and Firefox are supposed to be like the the spearhead for open source software and freedom and what you can do with a team of devoted volunteers who really care. Um, and it's all gone to crap. Why? There's no need for it. Make Thunderbird great again. Love, Omar. And by Omar, I mean me. Thanks for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that crap. Take it easy.